The marketplace or markt of the town of Sertogenbosch is very old. The drapers who once sold their cloth and silks there, as shown in this painting from 1526, still have their stalls in the same spot today. On a pedestal in a discreet corner of this square stands the statue of the farmer Knillis. It will be unveiled on the first day of carnival. Though many things have changed since the Middle Ages, one thing that has survived here is the continued carnival spirit known to Hieronymus Bosch, this town's most eminent painter. In a famous panel by Bosch, a poor man, the wayfarer, is travelling on foot through a landscape. He glances back, seemingly intrigued, towards a dilapidated building, half in, half brothel. Bosch seems to have captured the moment of temptation, the choice between the sin of lust and the path of virtue, between the prospect of hell or the promise of paradise. The painter's entire work resounds like a warning, illustrating the struggle of the will torn between these two forces. This theme is also to be found in his large triptychs. For example, the Garden of Earthly Delights. Naked women, the very essence of temptation, are presented in association with fruit and its fleeting taste. Bosch is hell, and Bosch is the painter of hell, shows in excruciating detail the punishments meted out to those who do not deserve their place in heaven. And according to the medieval texts, there is no vice that will not receive its proper retribution. Proud and lecherous women are condemned to endure the attentions of toads and lizards, and their image is reflected in the polished bottom of an animal tree. Alcoholics who have spent their lives in taverns drinking and gambling are cut into pieces or pierced by knives. Musicians guilty of having charmed the senses, lust is the music of the flesh, say the scriptures, 
are tortured by their instruments, which have taken on monstrous proportions. Unexpectedly, the image of the Kingdom of Hell is to be found in Iceland. The hard starkness of its volcanic fields, their mineral aspect, devoid of all forms of life, brings to mind the outer panels of the Garden of Delights. A 14th century Icelandic saga written well before Bosch was born gives a dramatic description of the torments of hell. The angel and the monk saw a man seated on a blazing chair. There before them stood beautiful women inserting lighted candles into his mouth down into his stomach and out through his penis. The angel explained that this man was the enemy of his own soul. He ate and drank without moderation. He led a debauched life, and because he loved women beyond all divine law, they now tortured him by keeping his malevolent soul a prisoner of their bodies, burning his mouth, his belly and his penis. Jeroen van Aken, who signed under the name of Bosch, was born around 1450. A time when the first stirrings of a great upheaval were being felt in Europe, with major new discoveries and a spiritual crisis. When Bosch died in 1516, the doctrine of Martin Luther had already been conceived. One year later, the nailing of his 95 theses to the door of a Wittenberg church marked the beginnings of the rift in Christianity. There is a tableau in the Louvre of the Maître de la Vie of Saint Gudul, which is the instruction pastoral. And it's a tableau extraordinary because we see a prelate who is in train, as the title of the tableau indicates, to do, in a way, the catechism aux adultes, eh bien, qu'est-ce qu'on voit dans l'assistance des gens qui, pour beaucoup d'entre eux, n'écoutent pas Pourquoi est-ce qu'ils n'écoutent pas Parce que il y a des, euh, des courtiers qui leur tirent la manche et leur tendent un billet. On peut imaginer que ces gens, ce sont des banquiers, des grands marchands, qui pensent à leur comptabilité en partie double au lieu d'écouter ce que leur raconte euh, le prélat, qui ont leurs soucis d'hommes d'affaires, etc. Finalement, cette crise spirituelle, c'est le refus d'une certaine forme de culpabilisation médiévale qui n'est plus possible, qui n'est plus tenable psychologiquement pour des gens qui, encore une fois, vont être pris, envahis par des préoccupations d'ordre matériel euh, et commercial. Venice, the museum of the Doge's Palace. The four Paradise and Hell panels are being taken down to be prepared for travel. In a few days' time, a major Bosch retrospective will be opened in the Boymans Museum of Rotterdam in Holland. Gloria Tranquilli, the Italian restorer, keeps a watchful eye on the operation. Lorsque Peter Bruegel a fait le voyage en Italie, il n'a pas tout de suite peint les tableaux italiens, les tableaux à l'italienne, il n'a pas tout de suite représenté ce qu'il avait marqué dans son voyage, mais qu'une fois rentré chez lui aux anciens Pays-Bas, il a comme vomi tout ce qu'il avait assimilé pendant son voyage, après une sorte de digestion, c'est la même chose au plan de la civilisation. Bosch, finalement, il fait euh, génialement, au sens artistique, un espèce de vomissement euh, de euh, toutes les inquiétudes du monde médiéval. Before the paintings are carefully placed in handmade flight containers, a condition report must be carried out. Alterations, cracks, missing paint and possible scratches are meticulously noted on photocopies. I do not think that Bosch ever visited Italy, and consequently the paintings in the Palazzo Ducale, one of the great treasures of Bosch paintings in the world, as we all know, I believe these paintings were done by Bosch in the Netherlands. According to my theory, the paintings now in